Professor Montgomery, I don't want you to speculate on the condition of the Prime Minister, but can we talk generally about the way that COVID-19 plays out? When you get to day 10 or so of the infection and your condition is such that you require uh, admission to an ICU, what is going on with your body? That's a very good question. And in many ways, we don't actually know. So this is being presented like bad flu, and it really isn't. This is as different from flu as Ebola is from an ingrowing toenail. This is a very, very different disease. You might feel like you've got flu, achy, breathless, and so forth, but this is not the same thing. So most people get infected, don't get many symptoms. If they do, they're quite mild, or they feel like they've got flu and they get better. Some, however, it is around day 10 to 12 in the majority, sometimes later, sometimes earlier, will get progressively short of oxygen. So the oxygen levels in their blood will fall. They have a very profound drive to breathe, which seems way beyond that that will be driven just by the low oxygen. And sometimes those patients are aware of that air hunger and breathlessness, and sometimes they're just not. And we see them blue and panting, and they are unaware that they're even unwell at all. Now, some of those just need a little supplemental oxygen and will get better but some will progressively worsen. They'll go onto a tight-fitting mask that helps inflate the lungs a little bit and deliver more oxygen. They may lay on the tummies to help improve oxygen for other reasons, but then they would end up needing to be intubated and air blowing in and out of the lungs. Now, normally, if this was a viral pneumonitis or a viral infection of the lung or a bacterial infection of the lung, the problem is the little air sacs getting inflamed and the air sacs getting full of gunk and, and nasty pussy tissue. And that's not what's happening here at all. The low oxygen levels and the very high carbon dioxide levels we're seeing seems to be due to something wrong with the blood vessels in the lung. So blood essentially is coming into the lung full of carbon dioxide and without much oxygen. And it's transiting the lung to the arterial side in exactly the same state that it came in. So a lot of this problem seems to be vascular. And indeed, when we measure clotting in the blood, it is off the scale um, abnormal. There are things called D-dimers that break down uh, clot, and those would be up a little bit if you had a clot. These are stratospheric levels. So this seems to be a blood and blood vessel disorder. Given how unusual this is, once you reach a stage where you require intubation, what are your chances at that point of survival? Well, it depends really on what data we, we can only really start reporting on our own because each healthcare system is different and they're overwhelmed to different degrees and, and the level of which you're overwhelmed will clearly determine outcome. We've not got enough through to know at the moment but roughly at the moment we'd be expecting around 50% of our patients to die and 50% to survive. It could be worse than that. Uh, I doubt that it will be substantially better. Professor Montgomery, thanks very much for sharing your insights tonight. Pleasure. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.